Hello everybody, welcome to Housing Bubble 2.0 News of the Week, or as I like to call it, another episode of As the Virus Turns. Today is Friday the 17th of April. I'm Randy Patrick, your host, putting the realism back in real estate. We need it these days, that's for sure. Lots on the go. Uh, big time uh, information coming out today about uh, some statistics, so we'll delve into that in a second. Uh, but first of all, if you're not already a subscriber, if you could click the bottom right button on the screen and subscribe, help my channel grow, I'd really appreciate that. Thank you very much. Also, um, this weekend, I'm going to be doing a, a live presentation on my new Facebook Housing to Housing Bubble 2.0 Facebook page. Um, I actually, and the reason why I want to do that is I just got off a webinar, a private webinar uh, with a, a high-level group of investors that was interviewing a uh, well-known economist in the housing industry uh, and had a lot of good information that, that he provided that I took lots of notes. I don't even have a chance to, uh, haven't even had a chance yet to, to summarize them and talk about them here. So what I'm going to do is actually sometime over the weekend, uh, it'll be either Saturday or Sunday, I will do uh, just a video, a live video on, on the Facebook platform and uh, go over what I learned there and you'll have the opportunity to uh, answer, ask questions and I'll answer them uh, live on, on the fly. So when that's gonna happen, not too sure yet. I'll obviously announce it on, on the page and I'll put a uh, announcement here on the community section. So if you're not already a, a f follower on that platform, please do so. Uh, just extra information, extra things that I can do to um, you know support the followers here. So there you go. So, all right, having said that, the number one thing I think that came out this past couple of days was the jobless claim. So we went up about uh, another 5.25 million. So right away now, we are at 22 million jobless claims in one month in the last four weeks. And uh, that is a lot of people in literally a month of, of claims here. So it's out of control here. Um, in the last week, 5.245 million Americans filed for unemployment benefits for the first time. And this brings the four week total to 22.025 million, which is over 10 times the prior worst four week period in the last 50 plus years. And of course, last week's initial claims and this week's continuing claims uh, the highest level of continuing claims ever uh, that's been out there. So not a good scene. Um, one of the things that was noted though is that um, what's most disturbing in the last four weeks, more Americans have filed for unemployment than jobs gained during the last decade since the end of the last Great Recession. So what we've gained in jobs and opportunities, you know, it's taken us how long? You know, we're talking probably seven years, eight years, if not 10 years. Um, guess what? Lost it all in a matter of four weeks. So um, very, very sad. <clears throat> to see that go <coughs> excuse me so that's a scoop there so yeah so i've got a chart here that shows it's virtually the same like roughly 22 million uh jobs were lost versus roughly the 22 million that were gained over the past little little bit here so clearly not a good scene for the economy and having said that guess what so now we're up to nearly 3 million borrowers have been granted mortgage relief and the industry is crying for help so more than 2.9 million homeowners have taken advantage of the mortgage forbearance program for government-backed loans part of the Coronavirus CARES Act relief package. And just wanna note that um, not the last video, but the one before, actually I can't remember anymore, they're all kind of blended together. We were at 2 million um, forbearance requests. So we basically jumped a million probably in about a week to 10 days time frame since I did that. Uh, my one video said 2 million. So it's probably about, you know, again, about maybe a week to 10 days in between. So there you go. Um, basically, this represents 5.5% of all active mortgages. According to Black Knight Financial, a mortgage data uh, and anal analytics company that is now tracking the numbers daily. So there you go. So this is what we're looking at now. We're, we need to see real-time data. The, the benefit of, I guess, where things are at with the internet and, and data services and communications that we can find the stuff on the fly uh, before it's too late or before it's you know passed us by and is hitting us you know without any... Um, warning essentially so the 2.0 million for loans and forbearance as of thursday so basically as of yesterday uh, account for 651 billion dollars in unpaid principal and include almost five percent of all government sponsored enterprise loans those are gses fannie mae and freddie mac and 7.6 of all fha and va loans so we can see that number growing a bit more if we're only like think about this now um Typically, we're in what? We're in the third week of April, and we've all, we're have all we almost doing a million a week here. So I'd expect that this trend's going to keep going a million a week, uh, at least for one more week, I would imagine. And then eventually what happens next? May's payment comes up. So maybe you had money to cover 
April, but in May you didn't, so who knows? So we could see this going on for quite some time, and this mortgage forbearance could get out of hand very quickly. <clears throat> so just something to think about uh, as you um, are working through your housing needs and issues. Now, interesting enough here, housing starts collapse by most in 36 years. Now, housing starts are typically from the builder perspective, not existing home sales, it's from the builder side. So they're saying that carnage in home builder sentiment following a record collapse in home buyers sentiment means it really should not be a total surprise to see housing starts crash 22.3% month over month. This was the biggest drop since 1984. So from February's to March's was a drop 22.3%. I know February was a <clears throat> relatively decent month for housing starts. And uh, building permits also plunged, but by a lower amount, down 6.8% month over month. Now, under the hood, single-family starts fell 17.5% uh, drop, while multi-family starts crashed 32%. Um, it's the lowest since July, um, from which is difficult for them. Now, typically when we see housing starts increasing, it's the multi-family that's dragging the single-family up. So in this case, it's actually dragging the single-family number, well, the overall number, but we just see that multi tends to swing it a bit more but in the end <clears throat> again single family is almost 18 percent and we've got um you know 22.3 percent month month drop that's the biggest in geez let's see you know 94 80 84 94 2004 2014 like we're looking at what um you know that's like 36 years so that's that's big time stuff here guys so again um and this is before more national lockdowns came into effect so what do you think you know goes on if, if you can't go out to see properties you can't go out to model homes or go to develop build developments, etc. Clearly, they're going to have their sales numbers crash big time. So, this is going to get worse before it gets better for the builders, and that's not that great. And and because of that, funny enough, guess what? Home builder confidence plummets to lowest level since 2012 as the coronavirus disrupts the construction activity. <clears throat> so, if we delve into this right now, and again, this all makes sense. So, no, there's no shocks here. Um, by the numbers, uh, the tone among home builders has quickly turned negative as the coronavirus outbreaks hits the U.S. housing market. The National Association of Home Builders monthly confidence index fell a staggering 42 points to a reading of 30 in April from a level of 72 the month prior, the trade group said Wednesday. Uh, the April's figure represents the lowest index reading since June 2012. That is major. That's, you know... That's basically dropping by over half. Uh, the decline represents the largest monthly change in the index 30-year history. The monthly index is based on a monthly survey in which the National Association of Home Builders asked builders to rate various measures regarding the real estate market as good, fair, or poor. So, basically, you know, the expectation now is that the home, the new home buying market, new home selling market, if you're a builder. It's going to be hard. You're going to have to uh, do things creatively to get people to come out and take a look at the properties, even though we're, you know, that, that's difficult. You know, you have model homes, spec homes. People want to walk through and look at, you know, the countertops and, and everything else that goes on there, the bathrooms, all the cool stuff that goes on in a new home, which is fun and exciting. And guess what? You really can't do that anymore. Now, I don't know whether, because I haven't been to any model home development or, or builder developments in the past few weeks, I don't know whether they're not allowing that at all, but I guess you know, from just logic would, would dictate where we are today that even though real estate is an essential service, people who want to walk through and tour model homes, they may or may not be able to do that. So I, I don't know for sure, uh, but you know, chances are, if you know, personally, I, it's something I wouldn't be doing today, simple as that. So it's kind of sad. Um, the question is whether buyers will be able to afford these homes on a going forward basis. With millions of Americans applying for unemployment insurance after being laid off or furloughed, all signs indicate that home sales activity has all but ground to a halt. The duration of the pandemic will determine how much longer people stay out of work and how quickly the nation's economy and real estate market can bounce back. And again, we're looking at our industry who just lived through a U-shaped recovery coming out of the Great Recession. Um, what we've learned is that it ends up leading. Lead, what we've learned is that it ends up leading to a housing affordability problems because it's more difficult to build in a U-shape economy, all right? So it takes them longer, it if it takes longer to recover, they're not gonna be you know, building product, putting spec homes and model homes out there until they see some activity, it's simple as that. Then everything is, you know, it's just a slow process when you're a builder. So that goes for that, but I just, you know, that that's a huge drop. That's, you know, more than 50% from a 72 
to a 30, that's 42 points. That's a big time drop in builder sentiment. All right. And apparently I didn't pull it though, but you know, uh, home buyer sentiment's down as well too. So basically how will the COVID-19 lockdown um, hit the housing market? Well, as time goes on, it's getting a little clearer. Um, so home purchase sentiment index, which you know, the builder index was here. Guess what? Here's the home, home purchase sentiment index, uh, which is created uh, by Fannie Mae, plunged 11.7 points in March. Uh, the largest single month drop in the data reflecting quickly diminishing home buyer sentiment <clears throat> okay a survey conducted by the national association of realtors so nar in the first week of april cited by fannie mae in the report showed that 90 percent of the responding real estate agents uh showed or stated declining buyer interest with half of them reporting declines in over 50 percent and also contract signings in early April plunged by about 35 to 40% from a year ago. Fannie Mae estimated based on Google's trends data, um, existing home sales will plunge 34% in the second quarter to an annualized rate of about 3.76 million homes, uh, a sales pace similar to the lowest quarters of the Great Recession. And as bad as the sales are, uh, it said the numbers will be inflated by the April data of closed sales because that's when deals signed in March and April are actually you know you know hitting and that was before the lockdown so the inflated sales data from february and march should give a modest support to second quarter sales but going forward it won't it's likely that monthly sales will decline to an even lower annualized pace in part as evidenced by the decline in the hpci which is the homeowner purchase home purchase sentiment index so there you go um total and total home sales of existing homes for 2020 overall despite its projection for a strong sales in the fourth quarter, would still drop by 15%, it said. And I think 15% is, <coughs> excuse me, actually going to be very, uh, very low. I think it's gonna be worse than that based on what I heard today on the webinar I attended. So some very interesting and shocking news. Um, and they, they just wanna go back and say, realize that the stuff that we're seeing, so we're seeing March numbers right now. And, and this is the, the whole point is that if March numbers are coming in really bad on the existing home sales and the, and the new home sales uh, you know, side of things, don't forget, we didn't really go into full lockdown mode uh, until sort of the middle to the end of March, depending on where you live and, and your metro location. So March was not a total write-off. So this basically you know, is probably half a month's worth of, of data that was, well, we'll say, usable or, or, or reasonable, and the other half is when the lockdowns were happening. So if March already took a, took a big a big dump, you know we can, we can tell that April is going to be uh, nasty as well too, and it's going to move forward from that. So uh, basically, April will be very bad. May uh, what market? Uh, we see no market according to some of these analysts here. Um, basically, um, ooh, just just different people in different locations are talking about. You know they're seeing less and less listings. Listings are falling dramatically. People are, are taking listings off the market, there's some price drops, the whole bit. So it's getting kind of nasty out there from a home sale perspective. But if you're a buyer and you're still financed, that's a great opportunity for you. Uh, people ask the question going, should I buy now? And, and again, I always have to caveat this with respect to, you know, what are you trying to buy? Are you buying a single family home to live in as your primary residence? Or are you buying investment property? That's two different paths of how I'm going to answer that question. But as well, you know, some people have to buy right now if we could all sit back and wait for the market to crash and wait for it to, to you know go down at whatever pace it's going to go down uh, which is still somewhat of an unknown to the bottom of the trough um, you know what's the scoop going to be then that's when you're going to buy your home you're going to be waiting and and the problem is that we don't know and, and please everyone you know think about this uh, you know think about this a little bit okay here you don't know when the bottom of the trough is or the bottom of the market is until after it's been there. So people who always say, I'm gonna wait till I see 30, 40, 50% discounts. Well, we don't know we're gonna get those, number one. Uh, number two, I think there's a lot of powers that be that are gonna to try to prevent discounts from happening that deep, but you know that will remain to be seen. But three, everything is based on the past, right? So when you look at comparables, you look at you know what happened, we're talking March and we're now in, in mid-April, mid right? So the bottom of the market could pass you by if you wait too long. Now, to make sure nobody turns this around on me, the fact is I'm not advocating you going out and buying anything at the top of the market whatsoever. I'm just saying if you're looking to purchase, things might start to loosen up, number one. 
to start to look and see trends in your local market, see what's happening to listings, see you know what's coming on the market, and if so, what prices are they coming in at? Look to see if there are price decreases in your market, and then you can adjust what you wanna do accordingly. On the flip side though, where some some potential buyers might get a little bit you know kind of messed up or tightened a little bit is lack of lending because now what we're seeing like with any situation here whenever there's a mortgage crisis that's going on or implied crisis you know whatever you know in the financing world you know lenders pull back and they pull back big time so we know right away that um, I guess you could say you know some of the conventional lenders have already said we're going to raise credit scores we're going to expect 20 percent down things like that we know that you know the government's still going to the government will still issue loans. Fannie and Freddie will still issue loans. Um, some of the lenders, or, or back them at least, uh, some of the lenders have already said that you know we're going to raise some of our FHA back loan you know requirements. We're going to raise credit scores maybe 20, 30 points. We're going to look at uh, VOE, which is verification of employment, a lot tighter now. We're going to need to see some very recent pay stubs as opposed to last month or two months ago. So that's going to be a challenge for some buyers, but the opportunity now is ask like other words if you're not under contract but you want to go under contract ask for a lower price see what the limit is out there if you don't like it move on to the next property so i think what we're going what we're going to see is that you know lending is going to be like what's going to be what's going to be um precious going forward is we've just done a reversal all right you know a reversal so buyers are going to be in the driver's seat and lending is going to be in the driver's seat so if you got a buyer that is financed and has a, has a decent lender can purchase your home you better think about selling it and the buyer should be able now to start to maneuver a little better maybe ask for some concessions maybe some lower prices etc because it will things you know things will only get worse from here as far as sales prices are concerned and just so we all can see this here um, you know uh, mortgage applications to purchase a home in the US during the week that ended April 10th so last week um, plunged by 35 percent from a year ago and by 42 percent from the peak in January and um, it was the fourth week in a row of year over year plunges so we now know that a lot of the buyers in the market are just they're just not doing it they're, I'm not going out to look at a house I'm not going to buy either because I don't want to be exposed to what's going on out there or I'm, I'm respecting the quarantine and, and the stay-at-home rules or I've I'm, secu I'm not secure in my job or my employment or my finances, so I'm not going to um, you know, risk jumping into a, a new home loan right now and, and maybe and or their lenders that they have. Maybe your pre-approval that you got four weeks ago is no longer valid and the lender that you're working with has, just, has called it back and said, we're not going to finance anymore. You know, I know there are specific lenders out there that basically have taken a hiatus from lending, uh, which you know is not good. But you know, depending on if they're a, a non, you know, like a non-QM lender or a non-bank, they're going to have to do that because what they don't want to do is write the loan and then what, by the time by the time you need to make your first payment, you've already lost your job or your finances have changed and you can't make that first mortgage payment. Nobody wants to be the underwriter or the loan officer on something like that. I can tell you that right now. Okay, so please think about that. But in, in the end, you know, now we can start maybe seeing some opportunities for buyers if you're able to fit within what's going on in the industry right now. So I did listen to a little bit of a quick video um, today, and it was it just was a quick on CNBC. I'll put the link in uh, the information section of, of the video uh, here. Um, it was just you know talking to some analysts about what's going on, and you know the situation is unemployment and housing and how it's all coming together. Well, the thoughts were, well, people continue to lose their jobs. Yes, people have lost jobs. We've seen 22 million claims right now. Um, we know that there uh, there may be more for various reasons. Retail sales are lower, so we've seen a big hit in retail sales. Uh, obviously, you know. Um, service industry sales, things that were going on that you would normally do and spend your money on have changed. And all that is bad for housing. We're seeing bad housing numbers now and that's probably going to get worse. From the American Enterprise Institute, um, the guy just said flat out, this is terrible. We're in a terrible scene right now. Um, the state of the unemployment uh, system is overwhelmed. And his perspective was, hey, if we already have 24 or sorry, 22 million people that haven't, that have applied for UI, uh, what about the ones that haven't applied yet? So, you know, he's just said that, it, you know, there are people who haven't got around to doing it and also uh, people who can't file because some of the states, their local systems aren't able to handle the, the load. They are overwhelmed right now. So you could be trying to get on or you're, you're going through the process and 
it just holds and it, it shuts down or it, you know you can't proceed and you've got to restart or, or save where you left off so you actually can't get your filing in there so that's what's going on right now so a lot of these a lot of the um the, you know the, the internet or the, or the server capacity for these systems just can't handle it so that's why there's probably a significant amount and he, they were saying it could be millions of people that are lagging behind with their with their uh, you know application to file for ui that's a scoop and then the, the third guy was talking about um, gdp and basically saying if we take a look at the first quarter gdp when we felt everything was great that's gonna you know it's all gonna go dissolve now he said it typically takes based on their analysis he goes it's gonna take nine uh nine quarters uh, to get back to the same GDP that we just came out of in the first quarter of, of this year. So uh, based on their economic modeling that they're doing. So that's, you know, nine quarters. That's, we're talking two years, right? Two years plus. So uh, a little bit of delay to get back to where we're going. Going, We don't even know that now. Um, the, the interesting part is we're getting almost real-time information on a weekly, daily basis now which certainly helps us try to figure out what to do in the future. Uh, but you know, sometimes we have to wait for information like the housing values are, are a month late and stuff like that. So where is this gonna go? Um, you know, I, I don't know particularly. I have some good ideas about that. I, I think we're gonna see a lot more carnage out there. Um, you know, if we have almost 3 million people with the forbearance requests in, um, you know, there are people who probably haven't gotten to, the, to doing the forbearance requests yet. And there are people who maybe think they can't qualify or don't qualify, so who knows? So, you know, there's there's more that's going to happen here and uh, there's more that to meets the eye with this housing market. So that's the scoop for today. I didn't want to get too deep into things, but, you know, this is, the again, let's summarize here. The number one issue is we're at 22 million uh, UI claims and we are at almost 3 million, just shy of 3 million forbearance claims. So that's four weeks of unemployment. And that's basically about three weeks of, you know, not quite three weeks, two and a half weeks. Uh, well, I, I guess you say from April 1st, I sort of count April 1st as when you would pay your mortgage, right? So about two and a half to three weeks worth of you know, people having time to file their their application or request for forbearance. One more month, you know what, I'm, I'm assuming we're going to get that number again and we'll see what happens as the weeks go on to see if that number gets bigger and bigger. So this will cause us problems down the road, mark my words. All right, everybody, uh, thank you for the views, likes, and comments. If, As I mentioned earlier, if you got some time, look for my, you know, follow my, follow or like my uh, Facebook page and I will put announcement on as to when I can plan out over this weekend that little presentation. Um, I think it's, you know, I, again, I, I, I just didn't have the time. I literally got off the webinar, uh, wrote some notes, and I came uh, to do the recording here. So I'll talk in depth about that on that medium and give some chance for some Q&A as well too. So thanks everybody. We look forward to speaking with you over the weekend. Take care.